So first of all, I just want to remind everybody, this might be your first time. Maybe you've uh, uh, been to one of our great webinars before, but we do have career opportunities here at Platinum Real Estate. We have an excellent one-on-one -on -one coaching plan where I actually coach you one-on-one. -on -one. What? Who is the coaching plan for? If you are a real estate agent and, uh, and you're saying, Luther, you know what? Um, I would like to take my real estate career to the next level. Um, I want to uh, uh, make more money. I want to help more people. I want my, uh, my real estate career to go to the next level. Coaching is for you. If you're fresh out of real estate school or you're new to the business, coaching is for you. If you're an experienced agent, but you're not making the money that you want to make, you're, uh, you're not achieving the goals that you want to, uh, to you know, achieve, we can help you here at, <coughs> here, uh, here at Platinum Real Estate. We have an excellent one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, program. We also have a 100% plan for those agents who say, Luther, look, I'm making the money that I want to make. I am experiencing great success. I have a great pipeline. I'm making a lot of money, but I would like to be on the 100% side. We have the 100% plan as well. We do have weekly trainings just like this. We have weekly trainings every Thursday, just like this to help you. Um, we have a live coaching call with all platinum real estate agents every Tuesday morning at 8.30 every single Tuesday morning at 8.30, um, we have a live coaching call with me. I basically give you instructions on this is what you should do the next seven days to be successful. So every seven days, Platinum Real Estate Agents receive a live coaching call that explains this is what you need to do to take your career to the ultimate level. So we believe training helps you achieve. Uh, we believe that training gives you confidence. Confidence gives you success. Let me say that again. Training and education gives you confidence. And then that confidence, it allows you to have um, success. Um, so if you are interested in being a part of Platinum Real Estate, please give us a call or text message. 404-994-4600. 404-994-4600. Forty six hundred, um, or you you uh, you uh, you can shoot us a email as well, careers at platinumrealestate dot com. That's careers at platinumrealestate dot com. So we would love to have you as a part of our platinum real estate family. Yes, indeed. So okay, you guys. So let's uh. Jump right in here today. We have with us Miss Tamara Ver uh, Miss Tamara Birch, VP of Mortgage Lending. You know, Tamara have been with us for a while. She's doing an absolute excellent job. If you guys don't know, you guys know we have a preferred vendors list. Um, she is our mortgage company on the preferred vendors list. Tamara is doing a great job. She's getting those uh, those deals closed. What I love, what I love about Tamara, and actually what I love about everybody on our approved vendors list, from the mortgage company, who, uh, which is Tamara, to the closing attorney, to inspectors, appraisers, contractors, maintenance guys, what I love is to be on that list, you know they're at the platinum level. Um, I started Platinum Real Estate in I, I, I choose as I chose the name Platinum because Platinum Real Estate is the ultimate level. And what I love about Tamara is, as the broker of this firm, sometimes I receive calls because there's mistakes. Sometimes I receive calls because there's errors. And sometimes the vendors let my agents down. But it's never Tamara. It's matter of fact, it's never a, it is never a vendor on the approved vendors list. And it's definitely not Tamara. Matter of fact, I have had agents have problems with deals with other mortgage companies. We've taken it from those mortgage companies, given it to Tamara, and she worked it out every single time. So um, can't say enough about, uh, about Tamara. Great to have her on the team. I am glad to have her with us. Um, 
Um, just an absolute excellent a young lady that's really making it happen for us. Um, so uh, with no further ado here, today we are going to be talking about Lindy. Um, and I was talking to Tamara and she talked uh, she was telling me about a new program that's out in the hundred percent financing and all that good stuff. And needless to say, I jumped on it and I said, hey, we got to have a webinar. And you guys know Tamara comes every month and gives us great information. Um, but this particular month, when, when she told me a few weeks ago about this new program, I said, we've got to jump on it. Let's do it. Let's jump in here. Let's make this thing happen. So uh, let me see if I can get her up here. Tamara? I'm here. How are you? Doing good, doing good. Good to talk to you once again. And I always say, and I always say publicly, thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you're doing for Platinum Real Estate. Thank you for the great job that you're doing in general. It's it's truly my pleasure to work with you and all of your people. You know, it's it's communication, it's about a team approach, making sure that we're ultimately helping that customer achieve their goal, owning their home. You know, it was their goal for 2020 or 2021 or for many years and they just couldn't do it. You know, our goal is to help facilitate that and make that happen. And that's what we're all here for. And we're very, very fortunate in these times to be able to do that for them. Absolutely. Well. Let's jump in here and see what we're talking about today. Okay, so I know right now, this is a great, Luther and I were talking about this just this last week. Um, it's a crazy seller's market, right? So what we're seeing is sellers are wanting to pay less in closing costs. So buyers are having to figure out ways to come up with not only their down payment, but to come up with their closing costs as well. And in, in a lot of cases, they aren't able to do that or they're putting in, and we've seen it, right? Offer after offer after offer. And, and, and it's coming down to, they just don't have the money for both, but the sellers don't want to do it. And they may not want to take the drastic measures. I had a, a customer this last week who moved to Macon, Georgia, because she couldn't get a home in Atlanta. And, and, you know, we don't want them to do that. Atlanta's their home. We want them to stay here. So we have to come up with some alternatives. So what I'm going to be talking at, about is uh, the rate advantage program. Okay, and I want you to know, you can see bottom left of the screen right there, there's my phone number, save it, text me, call me, email me, whatever you need, I'm here for that one-on-one -on -one to really help you understand the program. But we are gonna delve into this, but we only have you know a short period of time, but let's cover the important parts of this. And then know that you know it's my job to really deep dive into your customer and make sure they're qualified before we send the letter, before you drive in your car, before they pay earnest money and appraisal, et cetera. We really want to fine tune and button them up, okay? So this particular program is an FHA program. So first off, we're looking at FHA. So we're not gonna be looking at houses that are in major disrepair. This product is not for that. That's gonna be your conventional loan, right? Your Fannie, your Freddie loan. This particular is an actual FHA loan. Uh, the debt ratio where, you know, I go to higher debt ratios. Uh, a lot of you on the call know that 55, I just closed one at 61. So, you know, we, we can do some higher debt ratios under certain circumstances. That's not the case with this one. We're going to be capped right there at that 50%. We're going to do a first mortgage. Okay, I'm going to cover a lot of this. And then we're going to stop on the slide, do lots of questions, answers, make sure I get Luther's questions answered too. So don't worry about that. Uh, this is 96.5% first, so $100,000 purchase, the first mortgage, $96,500, okay? It's going to be a 30-year fixed. We're not looking at arms, adjustables, none of that stuff. We want the customer to know that that payment's going to stay the same. The only way that payment changes is their taxes change or their insurance changes. We don't want them worried that their interest rate's going to jump to 18%, Okay. Then we have a second mortgage, 
okay, at 5%. And some of you are already going, Samara, that's more than 100%. Some of you have already added that 96.5 and the five and coming up with 101.5. You are correct. This is above 100%. So how that will work is we're going to have the three and a half percent for the down payment as a loan, okay? And one and a half percent to use towards closing costs. Yes, one and a half percent is used towards closing costs. So they buy a house, we'll use the same scenario, 100,000. They buy that house for 100,000. They're gonna have a first mortgage at 96,500. They're going to have a second mortgage at 5,000, of which 3,500 is going to be the down payment and $1,500 is going to go towards their closing costs to kind of help them out. So maybe somebody who's saved 5,000 this is, and the sellers refuse to do anything, this is going to help get them in, okay? Then we're going to cover this a little bit more. So the second mortgage is a 10% payback they can pay it off as quick as they want. You know, when I have that conversation with them, we slow it way down. I make sure they fully understand the ramifications of taking this product. What does that mean to them? What does their payments mean? Why do they have two payments, et cetera? They fully understand the situation. And what I encourage them to do is to escalate the second. Let's escalate it right? So if we escalate it, then your payment is X. And they feel a lot better about that as well. But if they don't, they can't, then that's perfectly fine that they don't. Okay. We do have a cap on qualifying income. So the average, so roughly we're about 80,000 in a lot of areas in Atlanta. Okay. But it does go by the actual area of where the home is located. So we will have to pull that. So you want to know really where they're going to buy if we do an approval for this one. You know, we want to stay in this county or this rough area. We don't want to say yes to Atlanta. And then as an example, buy in Macon. Macon's not 80,000. Okay. So we want to make sure we do nail that down just a little bit there. And then, but the great news about that is, the great, great news about that Instead of both borrowers, let's say we only use one borrower and we take the other one off because the one will qualify on their own, then we're only going to use their income. It is not household income. It is borrower income. So a lot of times we can slide them in that way. Okay. They can't, they, they can have owned a prior home. So I do want to stay here for quite a minute because I know there's going to be lots of questions on this, but this is an opportunity for your borrowers who have a little money, but not a lot of money, to definitely utilize the assistance of one and a half percent for closing costs and the down payment, and then be able to qualify. Uh, so let's let's stay here for a second and see what questions you have, Luther. All right, questions, questions, questions. Let me check my chat line. The chat line is open. Uh, feel free to ask us any questions you guys may have. The chat line is open. So this is an FHA product, and you're saying, so it's the normal 96.5, but there's a 5% second. Is that right? That's right. So uh, it allows that borrower the opportunity to not need the down payment. They can pay it over time and they can pay one and a half percent of their closing costs over time. But so it allows them to get in with less money. And I, and I think we may not have a lot of questions because I've really slowed this way down on this particular product to make sure everybody understands what's here. But it's an amazing product. Of course, you don't want all of your borrowers to be under this particular program because you're gonna give a pre-approval and your pre-approval is going to say, 
and you have a first mortgage and a second mortgage, and it's going to clearly show 101% on the pre-approval. Uh, but when I chat with your customers, I will tell you, a majority of them, after we start talking money, which is my job for you, I know you don't want to do those things, but you know, I start asking them lots of questions. 401k, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, mom, dad, stepmom, brother, uncle, you know, we're going to delve pretty deep. And so a lot of times your borrower does come up with the money they need. They get that gift and they don't have to do this particular program. But, you know, we take our time and we go through that to make sure. Now, a um, couple of questions here. It says here, um, what is the loan limits? There isn't a loan limit. Where you're going to impede the limits is the qualifying income and the uh, debt ratio. So those two is going to set the stage for that loan. I do not find people who can buy 700,000, right? And you also have the FHA loan limit that came out. Everybody, just in case you didn't know, you may want to jot this down on a pen or paper or text me and I'll send it to you. But FHA did change their loan limits and we do have new loan limits of uh, 412, 250. And so let me repeat that. FHA's new loan limit, 412,000. $250, okay? But what was also fantastic is to help your buyers not become jumbo, right? We now have the Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac new limit, which is $548,250. That is phenomenal. And that is predominantly here in the Atlanta area, almost, almost all of it, okay? So we can check and see if you're going outside one of those areas, what it would be, but that makes a tremendous difference for your client to get in and not have to end up. So let me repeat that, $548,250. And that prevents them from going jumbo. So really Luther's answer to his question is more gonna be what is the debt ratio as well as what are we gonna have for that qualifying AMI uh, average median income, average median income, as well as not exceeding the FHA maximum of 412. Okay, next question says, Tamara, uh, does the income have to cap at $80,000 per year? So good question. So what we do, let's say the area they're in, the average income is 80,000. Let's just use that number for now. I take 80,000 and multiply it by 135%, okay? So when I take that 80,000 and I multiply it by 135%, that is the maximum that their income is. And it is by location. So when they say to me, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go here, then I'm gonna go and pull up what is, according to Fannie, what is the regulations for that area as the average income? So that means, you know, in Atlanta, much of Atlanta will qualify for 108,000 roughly, but you are going to know that number and your borrower is going to know that number. And sometimes I just, when I'm looking at the whole thing, it's all about the big picture, right? You're looking at the whole picture. If you get a pre-approval in 10 seconds, Somebody didn't look at the whole picture and Luther knows what I'm talking about there. Mm -hmm. You know, it is taking a second and looking at the whole picture, having the conversation with them. Then maybe we could drop a borrower. We could come up with a different plan, whatever the case may be. Okay. Now, the next question, the next question says here, um, if you have a loan source with a better rate, then the second mortgage, do you have to do the second? If I have a better loan source for the second mortgage, do I have to do the second? Yeah, this is a DPA program, okay? okay? So you have to be under the DPA program uh, in order, or you're going to be at 96.5. So this is a, a DPA, Down Payment Assistance Program, okay? So although they're paying it back, they're still getting assistance and adding it above the FHA requirement. So when I put in the codes 
for this program, FHA recognizes the codes and allows them to close at a higher loan to value. Good question though. Great question. Good, good, good. Next question says, please describe a typical scenario on a $250,000 purchase uh, for a one person income. Well, that's a, that's a very complicated, <laughs> that's a complicated question. So what I do is I chat with them because how many debts do they have? You know, do they have like my customer this morning, $111,000 student loan? Well, our path of what we're going to talk about is going to veer a totally different way, right? Because that's a tremendous debt load. So it is going to really, really depend how many cars do they have? How many credit cards do they have? Student loans, loans, what is their income? You know, all of those things are going to impact what this payment is going to look like and their debt ratio is going to look like. And, and what you don't want to do is to try to pre-approve a borrower. You want me to pre-approve this borrower, okay? Because I'm going to look at the entire picture to know that their income is there. You know, a lot of times, I will say nine times out of 10, when I get the application, the income is not correct and the assets are not correct. But it is about slowing down for a second, reading those documents and looking at every page and then having a conversation with them. Hey, you put on here, you know, 100,000. Oh, I was estimating. Okay, because I'm only seeing 74,310, you know, and just kind of have that conversation. But great news, we're approved for X and letting me do that. So unfortunately that question, it is almost impossible for me to answer. Got it, got it, makes sense, makes sense. Okay, next question says, Tamara, do you have a list of income limits for the Metro Atlanta area? So there is, you can, you can literally Google um, average median income uh, for Georgia, and then go look at each county and it'll tell you what that is and multiply that by 135% to get the most that it could be. So let me understand. So can I, so I need to go Google cause this is important. I need to Google all of Georgia, not Atlanta or not Gwinnett or not Fulton County oh, or not. So, so if you're just, sure. So if you're just Gwinnett and that's your, you're just staying in Gwinnett, most of my realtors are, are in multiple areas, right. then no, you can look up just Gwinnett. Okay? Okay, but by Googling the state, the state's right. going to give you everything. everything. Yeah, the and whole kit caboodle. Maybe you're, maybe you're Marietta, but you're going to go over to Gray or Dalton, right? So you'd want to know that Gray is not as high as Marietta. And of course it's not, right? We all know that gray would not be as high as Marietta. Another question here says, Tamara, are there any prepayment penalties on the second mortgage? No, excellent question. No prepayment penalties, none. Yep, and we covered that. We're gonna go in detail when I'm talking to them. Not only are we gonna cover different payments, different price points, make sure they understand what is the process flow? What is my team pod flow? You know, the communication level. One of the things that has been winning bids for my customers and why I'm still busy is because I pick up the phone when my agents ask me and a majority of platinum agents do, which is smart, very smart, they're winning bids, is I pick up the phone and I call the listing agent and I get permission from the customer to do so, which they all say yes. And I get it in the text. And then I call them and say, hey, I know you probably got a few offers here, but I wanted to tell you about my customer and my team that's gonna be here to keep you informed every step of the way. We're here for open communication that I know your sellers want when trying to decide which contract to pick. And your this particular buyer, over 700, 
been at the job over five years. Debt ratio is fantastic. And in fact, I have every single document other than disclosures once they pick the house and the sales contract. So we're gonna go straight to underwriting within two to three days. And I'm gonna send you an email notifying you we're in underwriting. Well, that starts that dialogue. And let me tell you, that agent's writing that on the contract, on a post-it note for the contract. So when they're presenting offers and the other lenders aren't returning their call, which most will not do this for you, then that agent's sitting there going, and I'll get text messages from these listing agents. Tamara, we picked you, even though this was $500 less, because we like your communication. Okay, so this is really important. It's really helping you win some of these bids. You're not gonna win them all, even if I make the phone call, you know, if there's 50 or 60 bids out there on one house, but to know that we can explain this if we need to, so that they're not nervous and that they know they've got my number, they've got my email when I hang up and they know that there's gonna be an open line of communication. That's what the sellers want, a line of communication. So I hope I helped answer that. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Okay. Um, next question says, at nearly 102%, what DTI are you capping at? Great question. 50%. We're not going to go above 50%. But that's still great because if you look at USDA, there's this 41%, right? So in some other programs of 39% or 35%, this one's going to allow us a little more, you know, in order to absorb that second mortgage lien. So we're going to not exceed 50. Okay, great question. Good, good, good. Okay, this says, um, what program do you have for international buyers? Um, I definitely will be doing some sort of a conference call for that in the future. Uh, but right now I do have some programs, but I would have to do some research. So if that is something you're heavily into, you are welcome to use the phone number right there at the bottom of the screen and give me a call and we could chat about that. Good, 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 good. Um, let me check out my chat here. Um, okay. What does it say here? Uh, the, 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 what is the DTI cap? Uh, I think we know. Um, someone have a, a have a question that says, can you underwrite the loan? Yes, actually, we do underwrite this one. So it is done in house with our our DPA underwriters. So uh, one of the major reasons I made this change, and a majority of you already know, is because they are focused on purchases, right? We are about getting our customers to closing as expediently as possible. If this is a great customer, we've got everything rocking and rolling and I have everything up front. You know, I had one that was done in less than three weeks and just sat there for a week and waiting for the closing day. If it's got some bumps and bruises, bumps and bruises are right about 30 days instead of 45, 60 days. So, you know, they are really focused on the team approach, which I know my realtors love the team pod, but it is about everybody coming together as quickly as possible. And let's just get this done for the customer and the right level of service. And we are a one-stop shop making that happen for you and your borrowers. And when you reach out, you know that you're getting to text me or call me or email me. Most of my uh, realtors will text me and they know that on the weekend, if they need help, I'm here answering their question. Okay, next question says, is the minimum credit score 660 on this program like it is for every other FHA loan? Okay, so this program is 660. Why? Because there, there's no skin in this game, right? If the sellers agree to pay, say, 4000 they might have $1,000 in. So they don't have a lot of money in when they're closing, or maybe they just have some closing costs, and we're above 100%. So this is going to be a 660 credit score because we want a strong, strong borrower that we know is less likely to, that 
they're going to experience problems and that they're more likely to continue to make those payments on time. Okay, uh, but at the same time, our other FHA program does go to 600 and we are able to help down to 600. Now we don't do any gifts under 620, but uh, anything 620 or higher, they can even have a gift involved. But it's great because, you know, I have someone who's gonna put 10% down, they have a 601 and they're able to get it done where, you know, conventional, they would be a decline. So it's all about looking at that big picture, having that conversation with the customer and making sure we're all on the same page together on why we're doing what we're doing. All right, great. Next question here says, when calculating student loan debt, are you calculating the, uh, the full amount owed or is it the monthly payment? That's a fantastic question. So each of the different types of programs calculates it differently. Okay, and it is about understanding that. So right now we see a majority of student loans in deferment. So they've been placed in deferment, they haven't come out. So 1% is what is being used for those deferred loans. So if they owe 111,000, like my gentleman this morning, I'm using $1,111 for his debt ratio. Okay, and that's for FHA. Now, conventional, which is why, even though this person's score isn't as strong as I would like to see for conventional, but it could get approved conventional, uh, we're going to flip him over to conventional because he's in an income repayment of only $105 a month. So I'm going to use the income repayment of $105 and to protect you and the client before they go shopping you're going to need to give me the income repayment documents so that I can make sure we're good to go, okay? That's the slow down, take a look at the stuff before we say yes. Okay, good, good, good. Next question says, Tamara, is DACA now eligible for FHA? Excellent question. <laughs> I literally, I try to spend my beginning morning, okay, I'm not going to tell you I'm at my desk at 730, but I might be doing my pre stuff at 730, um, you know, and that came across my desk this morning. So I will be delving into that and taking a look at it. But yes, it is opening up. So we're going to see we're probably going to see a lot of changes, many, many changes coming. Uh, and maybe we'll do something on that in the future. Uh, right now, we need to let it all settle down and see you know, where each piece is coming in. Uh, but we're definitely going to see some major changes, I would guess, this year and next year. I will also say this, this is not a question. You know, we have begun to see the rates tick up, right? You know, they're, they're beginning to tick up a little bit. And I don't mean tick up to December, 2019, which December, 2019, we were in the fours, right? We're still in the twos in some cases, depending upon what's going on with the customer, the three. Um, but if you, you know someone or you yourself, you were thinking about refining, you didn't get around to it, you need to take advantage now. You wanted to take the cash out so that you could buy some investment properties in the future. You need to do it now. Now's the time to make this happen before they tick up and you don't want to be where they're going to be at. And nobody has that crystal ball, but we see the trend and here it comes. Okay. Question says, Tamara, is there a flyer available for the program? I have requested one. I do have a um, screenshot. So the screenshot is available. I'm going to send it to Luther. But if you want a screenshot, you can also text me at 770-896-5001. Um, and I will either text it back to you or email it to you so that you have it. Good, good, good. Okay, the next question says, Tamara, what is required from a buyer wanting to buy a second home but I already have a first loan is a conventional loan. So that would be, uh, it would depend on what they're trying to do. See, I always have a question with the question, right? So if this home say here in Marietta and they're trying to buy a second home 
in Marietta and call it their vacation home, we're not going to get away with that. That's an investment purchase. You need 20% down, or maybe it's a two or four unit, you're needing 25% down. Uh, so it would depend if it's an investment uh, vacation home, maybe they're buying something over near the water or up in the mountains, then they can still get another conventional loan with 10% down for a vacation home. Okay, uh, you, you are permitted, which Georgia has such a wonderful opportunity for people who are acquiring properties like me and my husband. You can buy 10 properties and have loans on them in your name. And if you're married, my husband can have 10 and I can have 10. So it's 10 loans. So it, it's a great opportunity because uh, his loans do not come into the equation with my loans. Good, good, good. The next question says, Tamara. Oh, we're getting a lot of questions, aren't we? <laughs> yes. It says, um, if the credit score is 660, but a person own, owes a collection agency, can they still qualify for a loan? Yes, yes. What we have to do is look more so at disputes. That's what we're looking at. If they have a dispute on there, I'm telling them to get it off. They're either going to get it off on their own or I'm gonna recommend how to get it off and they pay to get it off quicker. But you cannot have disputes on your credit and qualify for any of these programs. One of the calls Luther had me talk to, they had a $20,000 dispute and nobody said, hey, you have to remove that. And of course the underwriter's asking for it to be removed. Well, now the credit scores are 540. So you really have to look at those things. So instead say, hey, you know, I slowed that borrower down. They're removing the dispute. Now we're fixing and raising the scores back up. But knowing that up front, taking a second and looking at that information before you're engaging in that contract, um, it's, it's really, really, really important. Now collections are typically 5%. So if you have a collection and that's what will get some people, maybe they have a repossession and it's $10,000. Well, I'm going to count $500 a month that repossession and have that conversation. If, it, if it's not going to work for them, I am going to give them ideas and tell them how they could resolve that issue. So I don't just say no or don't return their call. Don't we all hate that? The loan officer who never returns their call because they're a turn down. What? awful service what I mean you don't know what that person went through it's not your place to judge take a second explain to them what to do and then I give it to them in writing here's what I want you to do we want you to own a home we want Luther to sell you a home this year so that your kids have their backyard here's what we're going to have we're going to need to roll up our sleeves a little bit we're going to have to do that but we're going to get there and we're here as a team to help you they have to do the work but we're here to help them Absolutely. Great, great, great. Now, uh, one more quick question that I can answer. And the question was, if I have a client with, uh, uh, if I have a client, can you pull their credit? And the answer is yes, that's exactly what she do. She will do that indeed. So let's go on to this next slide. Let's go on to home types. Yeah, so you just text me who you want me to call and I will give them a call and then share that information with you. We'll, we'll get on a text chain together so that you're staying informed every step of the way. This is a quick flyer. What, what, aren't we, what are we doing? Single families, condos, townhomes, love the next one, right? New construction, we're seeing a lot of that, right? Attached, detached, and PUDs. So that's, that's kind of really self-explanatory. We're not gonna have a lot of questions there. Uh, so any of those, you're pretty much, you know, you're good to go. So I know a lot of people are getting into condo. The only thing I wanna say on number two and number three, condo and townhomes, it has to be for a condo, it has to be FHA approved condo, okay? You can do it, FHA condo lookup, don't write an offer unless you know that condo is FHA approved. You go to the FHA condo lookup, type it in Google, exactly that. Condo FHA lookup. You can put the name of the complex in there, just put one word and state of Georgia and it's gonna pop. If it's not there, you're not writing an offer. If it's there and says approved, 
you're writing an offer. Now, the town home is why I want to pause here for 10 seconds and we're running out of time. But some town homes are deeded as condos. If that town home, which I have one right now, that town home, and it is clearly, I look at the pictures, this is a town home, but it is deeded as a condo, then it has to be FHA approved if it is deeded. So you want to ask that listing agent that question. Is it deeded as a condo or deeded as a townhome? They give you the HOA and the HOA says condo HOA. It's pretty self-explanatory there. We got a condo even though it looks like a townhome. Okay, we can go to the next one unless you have a question here. No, go ahead. Okay, so the next one I just want to really want to cover. Okay, the there's not many no's. Look at that, not many restrictions, right? Um, now there could be when I'm talking to the customer, looking at stuff, right? So we'll take a look at their whole picture. I may come across some stuff. They had a foreclosure last year. Obviously, that's not going to meet FHA guidelines. But I'm not listing all FHA guidelines here. That's for me to chat with them and me to update you guys. Okay, can't currently own another home. Manual underwrite, what is that? That means they don't get approved by FHA and it says you can manually underwrite this. Nope, no manual underwrites, none, zero. They get approved by FHA. We tweak it till they do or we do not proceed. So maybe they want mom to co-sign for them. Nope, they have to stand on their own. Again, why? No skin in the game, okay? It's a strong borrower is using this program. Maybe they're like me. They have five kids. I don't know about you, but you go to the grocery store and it eats up all your money, right? Have you seen teenagers eat food? You know, so they just cannot seem to save 10 or $11,000. It's difficult, but they could make that payment. That's who this is for. They haven't missed any payments. Their credit looks good. They got a good job, but they just can't seem to save 10 or $11,000. They've got kids, they've got whatever, taking care of mom, taking care of dad. You know, that's what this program is for. It is for the strong buyer who just doesn't have a lot saved. Okay. Luther, you have a question here? No, I think that's excellent. And I think that's an excellent way to explain that. Um, and I think that's a huge, huge benefit of the program indeed. Yes, I would say, here's what it's all about. It's about us working together and open communication. We're all here to work together to get them to own their new home, for you to help them own their new home. We never look at them, or I do not look at them as a number. When you do that, the, the service level, they can tell you're not genuine. They know, you know, do you have passion in what you do? Uh, you know, and we're here to help them just because they don't have the funds saved doesn't mean we shouldn't try to help facilitate this. And I know it's a tough market. I was a realtor too. You guys are in a tough market, but you need to have, like Luther says, whether that's me or someone else, you need a person on your side that you have a question, you know who you're going to go and get that answer and they're not going to make it up because they're just trying to get one more deal. You know that they're actually going to care about your customer and make that happen. So my number's on the screen right there. So if you want some information, you have a question, text me, call me, let's get together. Absolutely. That phone number is 770 Tamara, as always, thank you. Thank you very much for being a part of the team and always doing a good job. Thank you so much. And I hope everyone's family stays safe. I know it's a tough time with that. I'm getting literally daily calls from customers or sellers who have passed or, or in the middle of a transaction. It's a tough time and we just need to really, you know, be praying for our families. So I wish you all the best and let me know if you need anything. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, one last thing, you guys. Hey, listen, um, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I want to launch a poll real quick. Quick poll. Um, how would you rank this webinar? Five being great, wonderful, one being I hated that thing. So we always try to work for five. That's obviously our goal, but please give a please answer the poll that's on the screen. How would you rank this webinar? 
The poll is live. Please, ma'am, please, sir. Rank this webinar. Five being terrific, wonderful. I loved it. Luther, please do it again. This was on point. I learned something. Hey, hey, the webinar was free. So if you learned anything, I think I earned the five, right? So uh, uh, please give me, please rank of this webinar. How would you rank of this webinar? Five being wonderful. Okay, somebody put a one. So you might have you 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 had to have got confused here. Let me help you. Five being good, one being poor, right? Uh, please rank this webinar. I'm going to take down this poll in just a few seconds, but please rank this webinar. How would you rank the webinar? Well, hey, we are looking good, you guys. The majority of you guys are saying five stars. I do appreciate it. I do love it. If you please do me one more favor, if you would now, please, ma'am, please, sir, if you would now Google Platinum Real Estate. You're on your phone, you're on your laptop, you're on your uh, iPad, your tablet, whatever you're on, could you please just Google Platinum Real Estate. We work hard for five stars. If you would, just give us a quick five-star review there on Google, would truly appreciate it. You know, we try to give quality education, we try to bless the people. And so as if you could say, hey, Platinum Real Estate blessed me for with free webinar, free information, didn't ask you for nothing, um, is if you could then show us a little bit of love and give us that five-star review on Google, we would indeed love that. Also, I'm going to put my information back on the screen. The best way to contact me is Luther at PlatinumRealEstate.com personal site, uh, LutherRagsdale.com, corporate site, PlatinumRealEstate.com, okay? All right, and I'm seeing, seeing folks are even putting in the chat five-star review. Look, appreciate it, much love. Hey, look, we're, we'll do it again next week. Next week, 1230 right here, we do this, do this exact same thing every single week. Look, I'm Luther Ragsdale. Broker CEO of Platinum Real Estate. Do not want to run over time. Only have a couple of minutes left. Let me check my chat and see if I have any questions. Um, I do not. Um, okay, so once again, you guys write down my information. Look forward to seeing you at the next Platinum Real Estate event. Thank you, and may God bless you, y'all.